Good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, today's tutorial is about the Web 7.0 Verifiable Credential Architecture Reference Model. And uh, if this is intended as a proposal or a pre-proposal uh, for a similar sort of device to be used within the, the W3C uh, Verifiable Credential Data Model. And I'll explain more about that in a moment. Um, you might hear a little bit of wind in the background this morning. I'm actually recording this from uh, Chile, Mexico. So the agenda, quite a bit of items, and this overlaps with the second half of the Web 7.0 uh, trust spanning layer uh, presentation from uh, from yesterday. So we'll talk. Uh, we'll review. Uh, re raw credentials and the raw credential sender receiver model, the verifiable credentials and verifiable credential uh, sender receiver model, the issuer holder verifiable model. And more importantly, that's going to lead us up to number five, which is this hierarchical taxonomy of credential receiver models, which is really the, um, uh, the embryo, if you will, for uh, the creation of the uh, verifiable credential architecture reference model. So in six, uh, we'll look at uh, verifiable credentials with JSON, LD, RDF extensions, i.e. the uh, at context and at vocabulary uh, markers. Um, in seven, we'll look at our alternative serializations, uh, something I refer to as structured credentials. Uh, and then we'll bring all of these together into the verifiable credential architecture reference model in, in step eight. And uh, all along the way, I'll be introducing this concept of VC blood types, of verifiable credential blood types. And you see along the right-hand side of the agenda here that each of those different types or very different credential models uh, has the uh, VC ARM uh, blood type marker uh, noted beside it. Let's get going. So, this I'm going to actually introduce at the end, but just a quick picture here of what the uh, verifiable credential architecture uh, reference model looks like. It's two-dimensional. Along the vertical axis, we have uh, has a verifiable proof, and along the bottom is the level of um, JSON, LD, RDF support it has. Um, that horizontal axis also includes the idea of alternative serializations. And then this is the same picture. I've just emboldened some of the features in the VCRM to, to highlight this concept of um, VC blood types. And you see the blood types uh, there in bold. One is VC, one is RC, LDVC1, LDVC2, uh, SVCs, and SRCs. So again, just as a bit of a review, let's talk about raw credentials, what they are, and the raw credential center receiver. So in Web 7.0, the following terms and concepts are, are equivalent or are synonyms for each other. There's raw credentials. Uh, a raw credential, credential is a collection of properties where one of the properties is an identifier. It's a collection of attributes where one of the attributes is an identifier. It's a collection of name value pairs where one of the pairs is an identifier. It's a collection of claims where one of the claims is an identifier. Or alternatively, it's a collection of assertions where one of the assertions is an identifier. So it just depends on what lingo you want to use. All of these are equivalent. All of these uh, are synonyms for one another. And um, there's a, a note, uh, special note at the bottom there. A raw credential by definition is not a verifiable entity unless the credential has a verifiable proof associated with it. So we're talking about really just how we represent data as a raw credential. So the raw credential sender receiver model um, is fairly straightforward. We, on the right, we have the credential sender, raw credential sender. Uh, we create the credential, we auth encrypt uh, the message and the credential attachment, and we send that message. We send it from the origin interface on the sender on the right to the service endpoint of the credential raw credential receiver on the left what does the raw credential receiver do with it once it receives it it receives the message it decrypts it 
it verifies the sender, it detaches the credential, and then it'll process both the message um, contents and, and, the, and the credential using some sort of workflow or, or business logic. Um, you also notice in the middle that we've labeled this with the VCARM blood type of RC, standing for uh, a Web 7.0 raw credential. Just to link back um, to the previous presentation, uh, where does raw credential, the raw credential sender receiver model fit in the trust spanning layer, uh, or the trust spanning layer framework? Um, we can see that it's part of level two. Okay, let's really briefly review verifiable credentials and the verifiable credential sender receiver model. So a verifiable credential is a raw credential that has a verifiable proof associated, with, probably with some additional metadata. The credential, if it has the raw credential, if it has a verifiable proof associated with it, is referred to as a verifiable credential. All verifiable credentials are raw credentials. Similarly, or as a, uh, as a corollary, only raw credentials with an associated proof are considered uh, verifiable credentials. So going back to the second bullet, all verifiable credentials are, are raw credentials by definition, but only raw credentials with a verifiable proof are considered to be the verifiable credentials. And if we look at the verifiable credential uh, sender receiver model, um, we can see that it's almost identical um, to the uh, raw credential sender receiver model. On the right hand side, if we look at the sender, um, what happens on its uh, origin interface um, at the bottom there, uh, of the right side, we create the credential and we sign it. We auth encrypt the message in the verifiable credential attachment and we send that message. Where do we send it? We send it to the left side, to the verifiable credential receiver. The cr verifiable credential receiver receives the message, decrypts the message, verifies the sender, detaches the verifiable credential, verifies the verifiable credential, and then processes the message in the verifiable credential. So we can see that the steps are virtually the same. What are the differences between the verifiable credential sender receiver model and the raw credential sender receiver model? On the right-hand side, the sender needs to sign the credential. That is the, that is the main difference. That's part of the outbound processing that's performed by the credential receiver. On the left-hand side, um, step nine uh, is really the, uh, the only difference here where we verify the credential, verifiable credential that we've detached uh, from the message received by the, received from the center. Again, we have the blood type uh, stamped on here, you know, type VC standing for Web 7.0 verifiable credential. Again, bridging to the Web 7.0 trust spanning layer framework, verifiable credentials um, live, ver the verifiable credential sender receiver model lives in layer three, the trust task layer, uh, because it's a derived sender receiver model. It's derived from raw credential, the raw credential receiver model, which is part of, of layer two. And if you want to hear a little bit more about this, um, refer I refer you to the previous tutorial on uh, the Web 7.0 trust spanning layer framework. Let's quickly review the issue holder verify. So this is a picture from a diagram from Wikipedia. We have the issuer uh, issuing credentials to the holder. We have the holder presenting um, verifiable presentations uh, to the verifier. So we, to map this into the sender receiver uh, hierarchical taxonomy, um, we have, uh, we recognize that the issuer is just a specialization of a credential sender. <coughs> and we recognize that the holder is just a specialization of a credential receiver. And so for the issuer to issue a credential, it simply goes through those steps um, that the verifiable credential sender normally goes through. They create the credential, they sign it, they attach it to a, a message and they, and they send it uh, to the holder. Uh, the verifiable credential receiver simply receives that message 
um, uh, decrypts it, verifies the sender, and then uh, ultimately verifies the uh, verifiable credential attachment. So here we've attached to the blood type VC uh, verifiable credential because that's what's at play. If we go down to the side, uh, it's the same sort of thing. In this case, the holder is a specialization of a credential sender. They are preparing the verifiable presentation. Um, they are sending it or communicating it uh, in exactly the same way to the verifier uh, as in the raw credential model. Uh, here, the credential re uh, receiver is going to receive that uh, verifiable pre presentation. Um, is going to uh, decrypt and verify the, the sender of the message, uh, detach uh, the verifiable pr presentation, and verify that presentation. Um, and so here, of course, we have uh, stamped this with the VC uh, ARM blood type uh, VP for uh, verifiable pr presentation. This is actually the only slide that I talk about verifiable presentations because I think most people are familiar with them and once you see the pattern that I've established for other types of credentials, uh, you'll be able to figure out where it belongs. Uh, again, as I spoke uh, yesterday, uh, the issue holder verifier model uh, lives in uh, layer three of the web 7.0 um, trust spanning layer uh, framework. It's a derivation of the verifiable credential sender receiver model, which is also in layer three. So by default, the issue holder verifier model does need to be in layer three and verifiable credential sender receiver model in turn is, uh, is uh, dependent on the raw credential sender receiver model in layer two. Okay, so let's, uh, you know, once we've kind of seen these, we begin to see a pattern here. We begin to see a hierarchy of derivations or a hierarchy of specialized specializations. Uh, so now at that at that aspect of things. So here we can see the three um, previous center receiver models that we talked about. At the bottom is the raw credential receiver model. Uh, above that we can see the verifiable credential sender receiver model. It's a specialization or a derivation of the raw credential receiver model and above that we see the issuer holder verifier model which is a specialization of course uh, or a derivation of the verifiable credential model and uh, so this is where this gets interesting and this is where it starts again to be that that seed or that embryo for the uh, uh, verifiable credential architecture reference model Just for completeness, and I probably should have left these out, um, let's look at a couple other sender receiver patterns. So in this case, it's the issue purchase order model. And we can see ABC Grocery wants to issue a purchase order uh, to David's cabbages for 10 cabbages. And they're going to do that by issuing a purchase order uh, encoded as a verifiable credential. You can see that at the bottom in the center. Um, you can see that we've stamped that with a, a blood type, a VC ARM blood type of VC, because it is just a verifiable credential. And ABC Grocery is going to go through the normal process of resolving the DID of David's cabbages, extracting its service endpoint from the DID document, and then sending that uh, purchase order uh, verifiable credential over to David's cabbages uh, software agent. Here's the second one, almost virtually identical. Here we have a vaccination authority and Alice as the actors. Uh, this time it's a vaccination verifiable credential that the vaccination authority um, is going to send uh, over to Alice. So in this case the vaccination authority is acting as a verifiable credential sender and Alice is acting as a verifiable credential receiver. Uh, again the blood type here is the same, verifiable credential or VC. So let's try and map these two uh, workflows or patterns onto our uh, trust spanning layer model for layer three. 
So issuing a purchase order credential um, is just a specialization, an application specific specialization of the verifiable credential sender receiver model. We see that represented by the blue line. On the right hand side here, issue a vaccination credential model is just a specialization again of the verifiable credential sender receiver model. We see that represented by the, the purple line. And so all three of these, the issue purchase order uh, model, the issuer holder verifier model, and the issue vaccination uh, credential model are all specializations or all derivations of the uh, the verifiable credential sender model in the middle, sender receiver model in the middle, and the verifiable credential sender receiver model in turn is a specialization or derivation of the rock credential model at the bottom. And all of the uh, sender receiver models, the specialized uh, or der derived uh, sender receiver models live in layer three of the trust uh, spend layer framework. Um, they have the internal derivation amongst themselves that I've referred to and then the verifiable credential sender receiver model is, is derived from the raw credential model in layer two. Okay so let's look at two more scenarios uh, that bring us uh, closer to the current. So this is a verifiable credential with JSON LD RDF extensions. Um, so we see at the bottom, there's a verifiable credential that contains JSON-LD RDF extensions. And by JSON-LD RDF extensions, we mean the um, at context and at vocabulary um, uh, tags uh, or directives that can be added to a verifiable credential. We can uh, see the blood types when we get to the actual verifiable credential ARM, there's actually two uh, LD JSON RDF verifiable credential blood types, so we call them LDVC1 and LDVC2. Um, without really explaining what structured credentials are, just understand that they're an alternative serialization of a verifiable credential and as well as a, a raw credential. Uh, so it's a different shape of the JSON. And so uh, in this case, Alice might be sending Bob some information, uh, any information, uh, let's say a, an email or a meeting request, and that could be sent as a structured credential at the bottom center there. And so we have this typed as SVC or structured verifiable credential and just understand that it's a, an alternative serial. Oh, so we're back to our derivation diagram, our specialization diagram, and let's drop these other two uh, new patterns or two application examples onto our, our diagram. So in orange here is the verifiable credentials with JSON LD RDF extensions. Again, it's just a, a, different, uh, a different encoding. It has the additional at context and at vocab. Uh, properties in the verifiable credential, but in the end it's just uh, a specialization or a derivation of the verifiable credential sender receiver model. Uh, so you can imagine what this one looks like. Uh, the structured credential, the alternative serialization example, again it's just a, a specialization of the verifiable credential sender receiver model. So with all that as a bit of context, a bit of an introduction into the beat, um, in the next six slides here, the Verifiable Credential Architecture Reference Model, or VCA. So whenever you're creating an architecture reference model, the, the key thing, the key thought process, the key piece of analysis and synthesis is what are the dimensions of the model? So the dimensions here, as you'll see in the next couple slides, are um, does the rock credential or verifiable credential have a proof or not. If it has a proof, then it's a verifiable credential. If it doesn't have a proof, then it's a rock credential. That's the first dimension. The second dimension is whether it has on at context JSON LD RDF support uh, within the verifiable credential. Thirdly, does it have at context and at vocab 
JSON LD RDF support. Does it have both of them? Um, that is, it's derived from a variable credential and has both uh, at contacts and at JSON uh, elements uh, in the verifiable credential. The, the fourth dimension is the alternative serialization formats. I've picked structured credentials here. You know, there's also discussions about JWTs and a whole bunch of other things. And, and I put the question out there, are there other dimensions um, that could be, uh, could be used to extend this initial proposal? So here's the verifiable credential architecture reference model. Um, rather than drilling into this specific ex example, I'm going to go to the next slide. I've highlighted the exact same picture, but I've highlighted it um, in the context of what we've come to know already, the verifiable credential blood types. So the, the vertical axis on the left is, does the verifiable credential have a proof? And across the bottom, um, does the credential support at context and or at vocab? So in the bottom left corner, we have the raw credential profile. It has no proof and it doesn't support JSON-LDF. Going up one to the BC profile, the, uh, the Web 7.0 verifiable credential profile, uh, does it have a verifiable proof? Yes. Does it have support JSON-LD? No. Moving one to the right, uh, there's the LDVC1 profile, and this is a verifiable credential. It has a proof, but it only supports at context. You can see the yes, no at the, at the bottom of the second column. Moving one more to the right, we have the LDVC2 profile, or what I call the uh, Department of Homeland Security profile. Uh, you can almost think of it as a private profile. It, is uh, VCs with the full JSON LD RDF support. Um, so it's in the third column, which is the yes, yes column. It has both context and vocab. And as a DHS profile, it has uh, other guidance uh, that they've defined in terms of the DHS verifiable credential um, profile documentation. On the right, um, that column is not actually related to JSON LD, but it fits nicely into this axis. Uh, and that's the, uh, the bottom right there, the structured raw credential alternative serialization. So that's SRC. Uh, it does not support any of the JSON uh, capabilities. Uh, obviously, there could be variations where it does, but not in this particular first version of the model. Um, if we go to the top right hand corner, there's the uh, SVC uh, blood type, the structured verifiable credential uh, blood type. So it's um, a verifiable credential that has uh, a verifiable proof. Uh, it does not have the JSON support, but it, and it's serialized in its own particular special serialization format. So I'm just going to wait for a moment for you to kind of digest that and this will be the last slide or the next to last slide so in in, in summary the the vc arm is being proposed as an overlay an overlay on top of the existing verifiable credential data model specifications it's not intended to be a net new vc dm, uh, DM specification just an overlay. It would be too large, uh, a, too much of a challenge, too much of a political challenge in particular to, to, uh, to incubate a net new VCDM specification. But I believe this can be presented as an overlay on top of uh, whatever comes out as the eventual verifiable credential data model. Um, and the last question here is where, where should the VCRM be incubated? Is the W3C going to be open to it? Is DIF a better home? Maybe TOIP is an option. Um, everything is kind of on the table at this point. So I hope you've enjoyed this discussion and got a little bit out of it. I've tried to make it fairly concise, around my usual 30 minutes. If you have any questions about it, you can uh, send a tweet or a DM to at Freddie Architect on Twitter. And and with that, I would like to thank you for uh, spending the last 25 minutes with me and uh, look forward to hearing your questions and further discussions about the verifiable credential architecture reference model.
Thank you.